You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, welcome back to the second part of our show on Tuesday morning. I got Rob Lapham calling all the way from Mexico Beach. He is our dis... What? Port what? I, I said Mexico. Port St. Joe. I know. He, uh, somehow or another, I always want to say Mexico Beach, but Mexico Beach and St. Joe are not that far apart. Uh, so how, I apologize for getting the wrong city because you are in Eastern Time, Rob. And so it's only 7.15 where you're at, not 6.15. So I didn't get you up so early. Are you still there? Did we lose Rob and Marie? I'm no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was listening. You know, work your you work your way out of the, the difference between Mexico Beach and Port St. Joe. Well, so yes, I am in Eastern right. Time, and actually, Mexico Beach is the last community in Bay County. That's the county line, right? Uh, at the end of Mexico Beach, and then you hit Gulf County, rural, not downtown Port St. Joe. Mm -hmm. So if I stand on my roof, I can see Mexico Beach and the Central Time Zone. So but if I don't stand on my roof, I'm, I'm all Eastern time. Well, it, it's still, you're not that far away, but it's hard to believe because most people think that all of Florida is Eastern time zone. And then you meet some, well, like when you first came to Panama City, you thought it was Eastern time zone too, until you realized that uh, it was central in this part up here. But uh, now you are in, now you're running for Congress, U.S. Congress on here. Uh, we have people that are interested in your campaign. Uh, we had a gentleman come by that lives in your town yesterday, picked up a yard sign. Uh, people want to know more about you. They want to know what you stand for. Tell people why they should vote for Rob. Well, uh, I'm, I'm a libertarian. And uh, in, in a nutshell, I believe in less government, uh, fiscal conservative approaches, which means cutting the budget in every single federal department. And I'm uh, socially tolerant. Uh, if you smoke pot, not that I do or care, but that's your business, mm -hmm. and the federal government has no business being involved. Mm -hmm. That's on, on the social uh, uh, side of things. And uh, I think the main uh, concern I have with our federal government and with the Republican and Democrat uh, establishment organization in Congress is they keep voting to spend money they don't have. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it every year now for 87 years. It did not matter whether they... Congress was a Republican majority or Democrat majority, mm -hmm. they keep voting to spend money that they don't have revenues for. Mm. And they used to tax us all, just keep increasing the income tax. And when the public re revolted from that, uh, they increased the amount that uh, the national debt increases every single year. So that's and, raising the debt ceiling. Is that what you mean? They do? Is that yeah, uh, they, they last did it in October. Mm -hmm. uh, Speaker Boehner's last day in office, the Republicans and the Democrats got together and increased the debt ceiling for the umpteenth time. And there's no, there's the government can spend whatever it wants through March of 2017. That's the current uh, uh, time by which Congress has to vote again. Uh, but every every president did it, and every uh, during every administration didn't matter whether the Congress was Republican, Democrat. They keep spending money, and uh, I hate to think what our grandchildren and future generations are going to have to deal with in terms of the lowered standard of living mm -hmm. as the result of this credit card binge that the federal government has been on for the last 87 years. Are you seeing a, uh, mm -hmm. the results of this binge, so to speak, of the lowering of middle class of America d decreasing in your viewpoint? Uh, well, I, I, there's no question that it is. And, and, of course, the federal government will say, oh, we've cut the uh, employment rate in half from 10 percent to 5 percent. They fail to take into account the millions of people who have left the workforce mm -hmm. and have just given up. Uh, I believe that the labor participation rate is down to something like in the low 60s. There's more than uh, there's 40 percent of people who would work, uh, of the uh, uh, people who are not working right now who want to, tens of millions of people have just given up in trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. And those that do have jobs, far too many of them work at uh, McDonald's in the morning or Walmart in the afternoon because, of course, they're, those jobs are under 30 hours a week, don't mm -hmm. pay health insurance, and it is all a result of government meddling rather than let the, the free market work its will. Mm -hmm. And there's no question that if, as and when, the government pulls back on all of these regulations and rules that uh, it's not actually large businesses, but small businesses. There will be an explosion in economic activity, 
and jobs for far more people than there are available today. Now, speaking of that, we know that right now we hear all this brouhaha about the minimum wage needs to be $15 an hour. And I started doing some research on the, the origin of the minimum wage. And what I found was pretty upsetting that the minimum wage was used as as a way to discriminate against the black man getting a job. And I read that in two sources and I went, I find that hard to believe that the minimum wage would discourage people from hiring a black person years ago, but that's what it was. It was where two sets, one for the white person to get a minimum wage and the other one for to get a different wage. And so if we raise it to $15 an hour, I would think more people would be out of a job than would be getting a job. I know I couldn't hire someone who was entry level uh, for $15 an hour to do it. It would actually, I'd have to cut back. I'd literally have to, and my guys that would be working here that are making a little bit more than that now would want an exponential, exponential raise to compensate for that. So it creates a domino effect and there's where the rules and regulations that you're talking about affect small business. Yeah, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, every business uh, seeks, it has to generate a profit. And in order to generate a profit, you have to deliver value to your customers. And one of the components of delivering value is you have to control costs. And in a service business, the largest cost is, is labor cost. Mm -hmm. There's no question mm -hmm. that if you are forced to pay more for your labor than particular jobs are worth, you're going to hire fewer of them. Mm -hmm. I just wish I could. Uh, we could all see the expressions on folks who, who, as a result of government intervention, all of a sudden their company is now paying a minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. And look at the expression on their face when they get their pink slip and are laid off. Mm -hmm. And instead of working for some other number, ten dollars an hour, and actually getting that money every payday, uh, the company is now paying fifteen dollars an hour, but they don't have a job. Uh, I, I just do not understand how so many folks can be suckered in by this we're going to give you something for nothing attitude of the federal government. It is destructive. Um, anyway, it, it, it's, uh, it's a real think, disgrace. I think they call it democratic socialism in Venezuela, and I think that's what they call it here in America as well. Uh, but let me ask you a question now. We've all, we've all, you know, you and I are libertarians. I'm not too wild about the Infernal Revenue Service. I'd like to see them go out of business. Uh, but what about the fair tax? We have a gentleman that calls every Tuesday about a consumption tax, not a value-added tax, but a consumption tax. That way people can either, they take their entire paycheck home. There's no withholdings. Uh, what is your viewpoint on that? Is that something that's worth looking into or something we should get away from? Or? It absolutely is more than worth looking into. It's worth adopting. But before I get into that, mm. did you say the infernal? Infer Revenue infernal. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> I'm it, sorry. <laughs> I have a sister-in-law well, that works know, for him. Um, the, uh, the fair tax, number one. Excuse me just a second. <clears throat> I seem to have that frog in my throat again. This ah, well, anyway, yeah, there's those frogs, yes. It's uh, probably need that second cup of coffee. Yes. Anyway, um, one of the, uh, what we're talking about is very simply uh, the fair tax is a sales tax at the point of sale. It's mm -hmm. very simple to administer. We've seen and we've had for years here in Florida, we have the, the sales tax, state sales tax mm -hmm. on, on goods and services uh, produced. And, you know, the vendor collects that tax and remits it to the state. Collecting the same, uh, collecting a tax and remitting it to the federal government is the same process. It's very easy to administer. Yeah. You don't need the Internal Revenue Service and pages. You know, the Internal Revenue Service, the tax code today is 76,000 pages big. Wow. Nobody ever read it. Nobody understands it. Well, maybe the tax lawyers and tax accountants. I don't know how they get through the 76,000 uh. pages. But the benefit is, is that every individual in the country decides themselves what they are going to buy. It's their decision. And all of the uh, uh, product is taxed at the same rate. And so that's the origin of fair. It is fair in terms of nobody pays more or less than somebody else. There's no social engineering in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the fair tax. Uh, th that's a real benefit. And there is one class of people okay. that you need to accommodate, and that is the truly poor. And today the federal government says the poverty rate is 14%. So 14% of people would have exemption from paying that tax, and it would be administered very much like an EBT card, the mm -hmm. uh, so-called food stamp card mm -hmm. is used today. It is far less susceptible to fraud, and uh, than any other program that's, that's been presented so far. And uh, I believe that the fair tax is 
uh, it ought to be the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. And believe me, the socialists, the liberals in uh, our, our government are going to do everything they can to uh, to stop it because it doesn't include the opportunity to create special classes of people and give and giveaways that are uh, rampant throughout the current uh, Internal Revenue Service Code. What, now, let me ask you a question. Since we brought up the fair tax and you're supporting the fair tax, you think it's a great idea. What about the competition out there on the Democratic and Republican side? I haven't heard them talk anything much more of other than increase our military, make it bigger. I'm going, okay, I'm shaking my head in disbelief going, how can we make it any bigger? We're already bigger than so many. And at the same time, uh, cut taxes. And I'm going, okay, you tell me you're going to want to do all these things, but how are you going to do it? Are any of them for the fair tax? Uh, no, they're not, and I have not heard any of the presidential candidates ever speak about reducing taxes. They're not talking about it this time. Mm. Now, in the in the congressional race yeah. that I'm involved That's in, what I'm talking about. Four, yeah. uh, they are all for increasing military. Mm. They are for spending more money. They fail to acknowledge that our military is already three times bigger than China, eight times bigger than Russia. I'm talking about the amount of money that we spend today. There's no country in the world that can stand up to us if we have a proper commander-in-chief who understands what he's doing. Mm. And there is no reason at all to make a bigger military. I mean, who is the enemy that, that we don't have in $600 billion a year that we spend on our armed forces? What on earth are we doing looking at spending more money and, and having to increase the tax burden or the debt burden? on the American public. This is where some people get really upset when, when I talk about this. They say, James, I hate when you talk about politics. And I go, look, our military is bloated. Oh, we need a stronger military. We have a very strong military, but you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And if we don't change what we're doing, we're going to be in trouble. And people can reach you at Rob for Congress. That's R-O-B-F-O-R-C-O-N-G-R-E-S-S dot org. Rob for Congress. Make a donation. Pick up a yard sign. Contacting. Volunteer. Be at for Friday Fest. Uh, first Friday in June. Downtown Panama City. Uh, pick up some literature there. We're going to be giving some stuff out for Rob. Letting people know that you are running. Uh, I, we are your... Uh, we are your campaign headquarters at James Auto Center here in Bay County. I don't know where your one is in the other counties, but we are Rob Latham's campaign headquarters here. Latham, I'm sorry. My wife keeps correcting me here. Um, I'm good. I'm early in the morning. Uh, but, Rob, we want you to get back on here every week if you possibly can let people know about it. You will be on the ballot in the general election. Uh, I'm excited about this. It's, and we may actually have a... Uh, a primary for libertarian senatorial candidates in August. We might. We don't know. We'll find out June 25th if they all pay their money. Uh, to right. do, man, that's what's exciting about this. But thank you so much for being on the show. And is there a phone number people can reach you or just want to, you want them to email you? Or what is it, Rob? How do you want to get up with James, it? anytime. The phone number is 850-340-3364. And uh, several emails. The easiest one to remember is rob at robforcongress.org. That's rob at robforcongress.org. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Rob, we got to get off. We'll talk to you next Tuesday morning after the convention. You be good. Talk to y'all, everybody. Bye-bye.